Hello everybody, I am working on carving a little, uh, let's see, a little uh, octopus astronaut guy. This is going to be carved out of half inch Baltic birch. So if you have any questions as I'm carving, feel free to ask. Right now, I'm just taking the first couple. Uh, I, I, I pick a little easy area to carve to start off with because each piece of wood is, you know, just slightly different in behavior. So this one, this one works nicely though. So I'm gonna go work into the octopus. Yeah, I'm gonna start with the eyeball. I thought I had you guys zoomed in a little better. Let me zoom in. There we go. That's better. Right now I'm just carving in the little eyeball. He's got little squiggly rectangle eyes. So I'm gonna go in with a different, with a rounder U gouge and get that squiggle, squiggle going. And then for his, uh, the highlights in his pupil. One big one, and one smaller one. If I can get that to pop out of there. There we go.
I want the uh, the texture of the octopus skin to feel. Uh, I don't know. I want it to feel organic. I, I like to I guess do uh, like a cross hatching technique on the octopus skin. So right now I'm just going vertically with my mark making. And then once I've got that all cleared out, I'm going to come in horizontally and change it up. I'm also not making straight lines on purpose. I'm just kind of chewing my way through by moving the tool. And the further, the deeper you, you move your tool into the material, the harder it tends to be to carve. So, I mean, you want it to, you don't want it to be super shallow. But I'm only going in maybe like, uh, probably not even a sixteenth of an inch. Hope everyone's having a a good Monday morning and they had a good weekend. You're wondering what kind of type of wood I'm using. The uh, I'm using half-inch Baltic birch wood. B. Come on back. I'm going to go for this other eye now. Once again, he's got like a, a blobby eye shape in there, so I'm just following the line that I drew. When you're finished carving, do you roll out black ink over the carving before you paint? 
Um, I just, or do you just trust the toning from the spray paint? I just, you know, I've been doing it so long, uh, carving, that I know what my carving is going to look like. So I basically just trust the spray paint. Um, you know, sometimes there's slight surprises, but that's kind of what makes it look nice is that not every little bit is controlled. I like the little surprises that come with wood carving. How do I feel about carving plywood? Um, I mean, I guess it depends on the plywood. Like, I don't like pine. This is Baltic birch, this is nice. I like maple the best, but I haven't been able to find, I, let, me, let me rephrase that. I like maple skateboards the best, um, but I haven't been able to find a plywood version of how awesome the skateboards carve so, this Baltic birch is the closest that I've found. But it's not exactly the same feeling. What am I looking for? I'm looking for my U gouge, my middle, my middle size U gouge. It's not out right now. Is this it? He's hiding. That's him right there. Do you spray paint the sides and the back of your heart? I, I, I um, don't spray paint them. I will paint them by hand with acrylic paint. But I don't paint the backs. I leave the backs raw. Um, the back's very nice. See? A nice wood texture. So I'll leave that, I'll leave that plain unpainted.
let me start going back vertically before I go horizontal. Do you prefer spray or regular shellac to seal your wood, or do you ever use anything different to seal them? Um, I've never used spray shellac. I just use uh, regular bullseye shellac. I don't use it on the wood, um, but I do use it on the MDF. Now imagine you could use it on the wood. There's my cat. Where are you going, baby? <coughs> Belvedere, come on back. I imagine you could use the shellac on regular wood. There's no, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I just, I just haven't because I, I paint. I generally are, I'm painting these ones, and so I just treat it with my acrylic stuff. Hello, hello, Belvedere, come on up. I'm gonna get my little U gouge to clear all this out. Uh, what made me start carving versus 2D? Um. Well, I took a I took a printmaking class in college, and really liked the medium. So I just kind of I went with it.
I mean, I draw, I've drawn and I paint too, but I like, I like the printmaking aspect. Bear or bird? Are you just are you, are you talking about this piece? This piece is a uh, a space, an octopus in space, in a you know an astronaut suit. Um, but in general, bear or bird. I have a lot more birds around my house than I do bears, so I'm gonna go bird. If I've got just answer in general, bear or bird. I'm gonna use my little U gouge now to carve out these blobby blobs.
Uh, MDF versus plywood pros and cons. Um, they're just they're just uh, different. I I chose to move, and this is you know Baltic birch, so it's like a it's a high quality plywood. It's not you know just I get it from a lumber yard. I don't get it from like Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, but I chose to move towards the uh, wood for my carvings because I wanted something a little bit more substantial, I guess. I wanted something that felt a little bit more, you know, just a little bit more real. Um, there's also health benefits to uh, carving wood versus MDF. Um, breathing in the MDF is is not the best. So long term carving wood is healthier, I would say. Even though sawdust is still a carcinogen, but I'm not putting up a whole lot of sard sawdust. Um, with carving this only with uh, um, when I when I go to shape it. Uh, the MDF doesn't have the grain, so you're not fighting that as much. You can you don't have to worry about the grain ripping along your your design. Uh, MDF is slightly easier to carve, although this isn't difficult. MDF is just easier. And if I were to use this to print, um, a slight wood grain would show up in the printing, which is either a positive or a negative. For me, it would be a positive. I like. I would like the look of that wood grain in my print. But other people might not see the benefit in that. But it's really just what you what you're looking to achieve. I'll probably still use my uh, MDF to do my carvings for T-shirt printing. Just because it's easy and and cheap, and I'm not sure, and because I have so many designs already carved in MDF, I'm not sure even if I move to a quarter inch Baltic birch that it would be the same thickness, and uh, it might mess with my printing because of the pressure and changing in between each block. So just for consistency's sake, I'll probably still use the MDF for my t-shirt prints.
And with the, uh, you know, I know it's been like two minutes since I last said something probably, but with the um, wood, I feel like I can get a, a finer line. I can get a little bit more detailed with my work. And I do enjoy that. The MDF seems to be a little bit softer. And so it doesn't hold small marks as well. Although it does a decent job of it. The wood, I think, does a better job of holding small, small marks. So I've got these hatch marks on the back of his helmet. And right now I'm just kind of going in and working on getting those hatch marks realized. Alright, I'm going to get a bigger you gouge tool to take out the large areas and whatever this can't get, I'm going to come in with a smaller tool and get the rest. so I'm not fighting the grain as much. Let the grain work with me. If you're seeing the like the slight red color that's like right in there. Um, it's just the, whatever, for whatever reason, the next layer down is just a little bit darker. And that's what that is.
I'm going to go to the smaller tool now. Um, uh, do I ever run into a not issue with the wood rather than MDF? You can you can see the woods, uh, the the with the woods, the uh, the knots, and this this MDF has a lot of them taken out. I don't this you can see on the back it's pretty. Let's see, it's really bright for you guys, um, but there's no knots in this piece. You can see them, um, and a lot and most of the you know the big pieces of Baltic birch that I get. They, they punch the knots out and they replace them with a little plug um, so it's not an issue. The issue I was having with my other, with the maple, and it's why I switched to the Baltic birch, was that there would be voids in the layers beneath. Um, where there would just it would be like air space and that was difficult to carve so that's why I switched to the Baltic birch which is the wood that I generally print on and I had it in the studio I was like well let me just try this let's see how this carves I've heard I've got people that uh, carve Baltic birch primarily and I was curious on how it worked I've, had, I've worked with it printing on it for years but never once had I sat down and carved a piece. And it carves nice. It carves nice. So I think this is my answer. It definitely carves different, but it carves nice. And I'll I'll learn its you know, its ways soon enough. I had a uh, a friend slash professor professor in in college, and I went to one of his artist talks, and he was speak. He's a printmaker. He's an etcher, and different processes have limitations in what it does and doesn't do best. And he spoke of printmaking in a way that you're having a collaboration with the material that you're working with, and so it's important to listen to what that material wants to do. Um, and I, I liked that idea and that thought. His name is, uh, that artist's name is Joe Sambiris. Sambiris, starting with a T. And he does, he does really nice etchings. So if you're interested, check him out. Joe T S A M B I R A S, I think, Sam Beerus. Alright, so I've got I've got him mostly carved out there. Give you a look.
I'm gonna drink a water real quick. Let's see if I I moved the light a little bit for you guys, see if that makes it a little easier to see. I feel like it's every time my hands go in the frame. Uh It gets it gets real bright and washed out because it sees my hands is so light. I wish I could live stream from a different camera, but that's not an option on Instagram, as I know at least. Because I have another camera running uh, to put this on YouTube. And that camera picks up all the details amazingly. And my phone camera just doesn't. shallow marks so it doesn't tear slow and steady You got this little control panel on his, his octopus chest, for lack of a better word. And I've got a little octopus drawn onto that for him. Round it off. There we go. Hello everyone, hello, hello.
And one more little strap going around to hold on his little chest piece. Any preference to the type of wood that I use? I um, so I've answered that question a couple times in different ways on this this uh, live stream, but I'll go ahead and answer it another another time um, since I know that you know people are coming in and out. But this is Baltic birch. It's half inch Baltic birch plywood. It cars very nicely. Um, I've used MDF and maple in the past. They all work differently. They all have different attributes that are positive and negative. Um, the maple that I was using, the, the maple plywood that I found had voids in it so that when I would carve, you know, a little bit too deeply, there would be a, like a, like a sinkhole that would make getting fine details difficult in that specific area. Um, if that wood did not have the voids in it, then that would be my preferred wood because it carved awesome. But because of the voids, it made it unusable. And I'm gonna see if I can find a piece of maple, you know, that doesn't have the voids in it. But for now, I like this Baltic birch. Um, MDF carves great. Um, it's just MDF, which is, you know, nice. It's an engineered wood product. But I wanted something a little bit more substantial for my carving pieces. Um, so I wanted to switch to wood. That's why I've been looking for a new uh, wood. And I've been doing these, you know, wood experiment carvings. But I think I finally landed on on this Baltic birch. Um, which works great. It holds detail well. You have to move a little slow with it just so you don't tear the grain up. Uh, but that's going to be with any wood product, any wood that you use. The MDF does not have grain, so it's really nice to carve. And you don't have to take that into consideration as you work. But the grain adds a different element of beauty. Um, so. It's all a give and take, so it just depends on what you're working on and what you're looking for in a material. I'm not done carving MDF. I'm not done using maple. And I'm not only going to be carving Baltic birch from here forward. It just depends on what you're working on. It's important to have a working knowledge of a lot of materials so you know that uh, as different projects come up what would be good for each individual project.
So it says that I have a minute and 53 seconds left in this live video. Um, There's only five people left in there and I am almost done. Is anyone interested in me coming back on for another probably 10 minutes, maybe less, to finish this live video or have you guys had enough? Let me know if you want me to come back in. Come back in? Okay, I'll come back in and finish it. So, uh, there's about 30 seconds left, 25 seconds left. Um, it's going to sign off, and then I'll be back on very quickly to finish this up. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing. It's not a pain to continue. I'll be back in. Ten seconds left. That's what I'm working on. I'll finish it up and then you can see how it ends. Thank you. Bye. Alright, I'm back. I probably got, I don't know, ten minutes or so left on this carving that I'm working on. Um, I'm, an, I'm an hour into it because that's how long Instagram Lives records for so I know that and yeah so this one will end up taking about an hour and ten minutes to carve and then a little bit longer to paint up and do what else I need to do to it to get it ready to be a final piece. I like to carve every little leg slightly differently so they don't all feel the same. I want, I want there to be variety in the textures, even if it's the same texture that I'm trying to get. I don't want to carve everything exactly the same because it's kind of boring. Um, so each one feels a little bit different. And there's no rhyme or way reason for the decisions I'm making generally. I just kind of go for it and see how it looks. Carving small is harder than carving big. Um, obviously, because because of the size of the tool and the medium, you're limited to the marks that you can make um, on a small scale. Carving large lets you uh, explore mark making a little bit further. And one thing I'm excited about is that I've got a larger press on the way, so I'll be able to work with larger pieces soon. Um, and it's not giant, but it's it's a 24-inch press, so I'll be able to do some bigger things and more experimental pieces on a larger scale. So I've got I'm excited about that. I 
line that edge so the it doesn't tear all the way to the to the uh, edge of the block. I was feeling the grain pulling. And then I've got the little, I've got three little tentacles in the back that are kind of hidden. Hello, Tackage Press. I was just talking about you. Um, and a press that I ordered. And how I'm excited to get it and work on things that are larger. Since these little tentacles are in the background, uh, I'm not going to make them quite as defined. I'm just going to hint at them. I'm kind of stepping back and blurring my eyes a little bit to see if I like the marks that I made. I'm going to just do a little a couple of those cross marks. And I think this piece is done. So, yeah, I think we're done. Let me turn it right side up for you guys so you can see. So thank you guys all for watching me carve this little guy little space octopus and a space helmet. Hope you enjoyed me talking every now and then about what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, and what I'm using. Let me know what you think of this video. And if you're one of the probably few that watched it all the way through, thank you for watching all the way through. Um, I'll be making more of these soon. So thank you guys for watching. Bye.